guys, Mel here, and I wanted to show you on this storyline tutorial how to create a simple slide out menu that covers the storyline player. And I wanted to create it kind of like this. This is a web page that I created for the eLearning Heroes Challenge this week, which was on designing a slide background. And so the challenge itself doesn't really have to do with this tutorial but it did influence my design on this website. Um, what we're going to do is do this a little bit differently. The, the way that I have this laid out is it's a really simple um, landing page with a menu and my inspiration for that was sort of from the Spotify um, different covers for different types of playlists. And as you can see, they've got like gradients and some vintage feel. And I wanted to really recreate that for e-learning and create a modern e-learning course based off of that. So what I did was instead of using this image that I quickly created for that e-learning scenarios challenge, I created a new image. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to open up your storyline. And then you want to configure your story size. So under the design tab, you want to figure out what, your, what you want your story size to be. And then um, an easy way to do that, to know what size you want it to be, is to go to one of these websites like whatismyscreenresolution.com and you can figure out what screen resolution you're using. You can also figure out what kind of screen resolution your users will be using too, so you can ask them to go view this or a, a similar site like this. So let's go back to our storyline. What we first want to do is once we have uh, the story size set up, we want to insert our background. And for our background, what I've done is I went on to the site Onsplash and got a free public domain picture and I created a gradient over it. So I did, you got this guitar picture here and I created a gradient over it. So it kind of looks like those ones um, that are on Spotify. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to resize this to my screen and or or actually I can just put it in the background that would actually probably work a lot better so let's see what it looks like if I just put it in the background so if you go ahead up and click into file and find your picture that should be good yes perfect all right so we've got our picture there and then the second part of this is we want to create that um, little dotted menu up here so that we can trigger our menu to slide out so we can easily redo that in here without having to download any kind of images or SVGs or anything like that so what we'll do is we'll just create three of those little dots any size that you think would work well for you and I would say for this one I might do something like a like eyedropper and figure out like what's a dark color in here that will look good up here. So let's just go ahead and pick like a purple color. And what we can do is recreate that. So I want to copy and paste it three times and then align those. So let's align those left and then make sure that they're distributed vertically so that there's the, the same space between. And then we will just get rid of the shape outline so that they look a little bit better. And I'll create them as a group. And then what we can do is let's align this left and align it top. What we can do is, I'll just do one, two. What we can do with this is we can create a hotspot over it that, um, that triggers it, the layer to slide out. And actually, I let, these could look a little bit better if they were smaller, so I'm going to make them smaller and make sure that it's lying on some top. All right, so, or you could even just put the trigger on it, but um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a hot spot over it, and no one will be able to see this. So we have the hotspot and what we're going to do now is we're going to create that simple slide out menu and we're not going to use any kind of variables or anything like that we're just going to use triggers for this so what we're going to do is we're going to create a new layer down here so 
um, under the base layer here, there's a little button that says new layer. And in this new layer, we're going to create a um, sort of overlay for this. And this is where we'll put all of our text and everything. So what we'll do is we'll insert a shape and we want this rectangle to fit the whole screen. So let's make sure we know what size our screen is again. So back to story size under design. And so it's 1366 by 857. So we'll do that for this. So we'll go 1366, oops, 1366 by 857. Oops, wrong. So it's 857 and 1366. And I've never done this tutorial before. This is sort of on the fly, so sorry if I'm a little bit slower than usual. Um, so we want to have it aligned right in the center here. And then what I like to do is create this menu as transparent so you can see the background. So we'll go to Format Shape. And then we want the transparency to be set to, let's say, I think 25% will look kind of good. So you can mess around with that and see what you want it to be. Um, oh, I want to align that to the bottom. You can see where that all will align. And then I will get rid of the shape outline for now on that. So it should have no shape outline. And this is where we want to create an animation for when it, when you click on that hotspot, it will fly in. So what you want to do is go to animations, select fly in. Under effect options, you want to go from the left because we want it to fly into the left. And every time we revisit this menu, we want to make sure that it flies back in. So one of the things that you want to do is under that layer that you just created, the new layer, and we'll just call it menu. Um, what you want to do is go to properties and then when you go to the automatically decide or when revisiting you want to reset it to the initial state so that's going to tell it to do the animation over again if you revisit it so you want to click OK when you set revisiting to reset to initial state and now the next part of this what we have to do is we have to say okay we want this um, this menu to close. So what we're going to do is there's a few different ways we can do this. Um, what I will do is I'll just create a button at the top. So let's insert a button. And like the other one, the other one has an X. So let's do something that's kind of similar to an X. So we'll use this equation shape and we'll put it up in the top. And you can use this little yellow guy here this, to make the, the shapes more thin or thick and let's do more thin and we'll do like a white color because that looks pretty sharp against this background here and we'll put this up here and so that will trigger it to close and what we want to do with this is we want to make sure that it has the same animation coming in as the rectangle and what's really cool about this is you can use the animation painter so you want to have your rectangle selected, your background, click on the animation painter under animations and then just click on the X so that it comes in at the same time. And then when you go ahead and you add your text or your menu items later, you want to do the exact same thing with those two. So we have that done. So now we want to create the effect of it sliding back in. And what we're going to do with this is we want to click on the hotspot and or click and insert a hotspot under controls under insert and then controls click hotspot and then put the hotspot over this X so we want to grab that and put it over the X and we want to create a trigger that's going to show a different layer and that you could do this many different ways this is just the way that I prefer to do it so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to make sure that this X on the hotspot says hide layer this layer when user clicks because we do want to hide this layer and then what I'm going to do is click on this menu and have it selected and then I want under the slide layers and then what I want to do is duplicate it 
And what I'm going to do here is for this version, this is going to be like the slide out version. So when on the layer below it, when you click it out, it will come to this one. So we want to say menu, slide out. And again, there's many different ways to do it. And we know that when we click on this layer here, we see that the animations fly in and we don't want any animation on this. But we do on the enter, we want to have one flying out. So we'll click fly out. And then what we want it to do is go back to the left. And we want to make this a, like a super short one so that when we, we have this slide active, it's just really, really short. So let's make sure, let's make it like, you want to have it like less than a second. We'll, we'll test out what it looks like. And then on the X, we also want to make sure that it has the same function as that. So let's, let's move it above the hotspot for a second. Let's click this and then add the animation painter that. And you want to make sure the hotspot has it too. So that's one thing I forgot to mention. So let's make sure the hotspot also has the same animation as everything else. There's little things that you can forget in here. So you just have to make sure that you go through and, and make sure that works. Okay. So, um, and actually we could just get rid of the hotspot on here because no one's going to click on anything because it's going to go so fast. So let's get rid of the hotspot. And then what we want to do for this one is we want to hide the layer when timeline ends. So the timeline's going to end rather quickly here and hopefully that'll work. So now we want to go back to the menu layer now that we have the slide out layer closed. And we want to say when the user clicks on this hotspot to show our slide out. So we're going to hide this layer. We're going to show this layer. This layer is going to close really quickly and that should work for our slide out menu. So I'm going to go back to here and make sure that this hotspot on the main layer is going to the menu. And let's give that a try. Awesome, it works, very cool. One other thing you definitely do wanna to check too with this menu slide out is that, and it should have the same properties because we duplicated it from the menu. Um, you want to check the properties and make sure it's reset to initial state so that anytime you go and play this, it will um, continue like that. And you can create this menu in your slide master too, and that will help you easily be able to duplicate it to any of your slides in your project. Um, the one other thing that I want to cover is adding the text to this. So we can also add text. I'll add one link. And I'll do it by a button because that will be the quick and easy way to do it. So what I want to do, like in the one that we have on here, when it slides out, you can see you can hover over these. What I want to do is just say, like, we'll just put this one as a test. We'll make it big. And then I'll just change the button's fill and the button's border to nothing. And this will keep it, it'll still be a button, so it'll still have all these states here. And we can change the, like the color of the actual um, text so that it has that effect on it. So what I'm gonna do is when you hover, let's change the text, the text color to, what should we change it to? Oh, let's change the text color to like, maybe, a, well, let's figure it out. Like, let's do like that color so it's kind of similar to that. And what I'll do is I will align this to the middle of the screen. Oops. sure that's aligned in the center and then what we'll do is we'll make sure that the animation is applied to this too so we want to make sure that we grab the square or whatnot and 
um, we do the animation painter and it has the same properties so it's going in and out and then um, we also want to make sure that that hotspot there has that and what you could just do with this button here is you can copy it and paste it to your slide out oops wrong thing Let's grab the button paste it there and then you want to apply the same animation to this one too and that should be about it let's go ahead and test that out again oh it doesn't look like that's working And you want to make sure when you copy that button over that the um, timeline is still remains at under a second long because when you copy the button over it's going to extend the timeline a little bit um, so you definitely want to test that out and then I had just so this is my first time doing this one too another thing that you might need to do to get that hover effect to work is under your states when you go into the hover state you do have to have um, the the button having a color but you want to change the transparency to 100 percent or else it might glitch out um, i just found that that was happening with mine so um, make it have a color but make the outline and or the fill be transparent so um, that's about it. I will run this again so you guys can see that it works. Click this, click that, and then it exits out. So that's just a quick and easy way to create a simple, very minimalistic visual um, menu.